Hey guys, I had to go live on my phone because, well, none of the computers are working, so I'm a little late for Second Sunday, but I just wanted to hop on and give you guys uh, May Second Sunday. I do this every month to give you guys kind of the energy report in the 411 of what is going down on the planet energetically, where we are as a collective right now. Um, I just was over at Mercy Church giving a, a little uh, a story about faith and um, hope. So that's where I was earlier today. If you guys want to check that out, I'll post it on my page. Good morning, everyone. Um, sorry for the, the late jump on here. Facebook would not let me go alive, so I have to do it on my phone. First of all, happy Mother's Day. And this goes out to all nurturing beings, whether you're a single dad, single mom, right? It's about that nurturing energy right now. And May is all about things blooming, right? We are in the most exciting and confusing time in history right now where we live in a constant state of uncertainty. And if you understand quantum possibilities, you understand that when you're in a state of, of kind of um, surrender, where we have to constantly be right now, we don't know what's gonna happen by day to day, it is where all ma miracles are birthed and born. So I really want you guys to take a moment and just look at where you have come from the beginning of this year to now. And it's one of those things where we could not have thought this up of how the world is shaping itself. And regardless if you're going down the rabbit hole and getting lost in conspiracy theories or you know, you're becoming an activist about what's right and wrong, I want you guys to remember that first and foremost, that love is the vibration that wins, okay? So if there's an opposing force on this planet right now, and we're living in a state of uncertainty, we're actually living in kind of a zero point field. We're living in this place right now where we do have more choice than we think because we're not constantly chasing the future. We don't know what's gonna happen. We live in such a state of uncertainty right now that that is where all of your potential power resides. And I just did a class in my Tika group the other day about responsibility in these times. You know, one thing that I brought up in class was that for years and years and years and years, regardless if you wanna call dark, light, good, bad, evil, you know, darkness, God, the devil, whatever you want to call it, there is obviously two opposing forces on this planet because we live on a planet of duality. It's like, that's not new information. There is not new, this is not new information that there is really shady things going on on the planet. It is not new information that, that children and women and people have died secretly right? This is not new information. It's been happening since the beginning of time. I think that the world is waking up and therefore as the world wakes up, we start to move into that self-realization of, oh my goodness, I cannot believe this is happening. And that's good. It brings you into, you know, knowledge is power and that's important place for you to visit. Okay. I'm going to make this very, very, very clear for you guys. If there's two opposing forces on this planet, Dark, light, good, evil, blah, negative, positive, whatever you want to call it. Which team do you choose to be on, right? You live in a state of uncertainty right now. You don't know what's going to happen next week. We don't know, you know, what future conditions look like. We don't know if we're going to have to wear a mask or if we're not going to be able to leave the house or if the planet is going to get, you know, zapped with 5G. We don't, we don't know. But what we do know is we do know how to love, even if that's, the love you have for your puppy, your kitten. What are you nurturing right now? What is your Mother's Day reflection? Nurturing is the essence of loving in motion. That's what nurturing is. It's you putting love into motion. That's what nurturing is. And we're celebrating that today. So it's very important for us to look at what we do have when we live in such uncertain times. And when we look at everything as a possibility and a limit, what is bringing you more towards your dead ends and your limits that, that you could switch to a different probability or a different observation point and begin to open doors? So I came a little bit down hard on my class yesterday because obviously they should know better, right? They've been working with me for years and really reminded everybody that when you are not focused on the one thing that you know how to do intuitively, which is love and nurture, when you're not in that vibration, you're actually contributing 
to the absence of love on this planet, which is what's made everything go screwy for so long. And like, look how easy it's been for us to just give up our power. You know, we've invested and trusted into these systems, government and hierarchy because we believe that they knew what was best for us and our well-being. And we're starting to see that the, you know, the veil is dropping and we're starting to see what is actually occurring. But I will urge you all to not live in that space, to not go down that rabbit hole and lose yourself to the information that you may learn that has been apparent and going on since the beginning of time on this planet, okay? You are here, you are here on a very special mission to demonstrate the opposite of that reflection. You are here to be love in pain. You are here to be nurturing in, in, you know, in, the, in suffering. You are here to remind people that love is the winner. And I want you to just really go down this little rabbit hole with me for a minute. Think about this. For years, a good hundred years now. Obviously, with modern medicine, it's a positive and a negative spectrum. Do we live in duality? So with all the medicine and all of the modern day, you know, ways for us to live our bodies longer, we're also bombarded with poisons and toxins and chemicals constantly. It's coming through your TV. It's being put into your air. It's in your radios. It's in your smartphones. It's in your food. It's in your water. It's in your friends. It's in your family. You are constantly, constantly, constantly being bombarded with toxic, low vibrational energy. Bottom line, all day long. Hmm, how are we doing so well? How did a genetically modified bio virus not be able to kill more people? I really want you guys to go down this rabbit hole with me for a minute and look at this from a different perspective. If, if the coronavirus was, in fact, a biological weapon designed to depopulate the planet, blah, 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 for a higher agenda, how come it's not working? How come the hospitals are empty? How come it's 0.05%? Okay, and I'm not, I'm not downplaying the people who have been affected by this. I'm saying look at the potential and the limits here. How come even a, a patented virus is not doing more damage? And here's why. It's because we are becoming more loving as species. We are taking responsibility for each other, for our own minds, for our own bodies. We're starting to take care of our planet. Love wins, you guys. If I stand outside and vibrate love purely from my heart by looking at a kitten or holding a baby or just remembering a happy memory or, or observing a beautiful rainbow, what is actually coming out of my body, and you can quote me on this, is the antidote for all poisons and toxins on this planet. The vibration of love, this is written in every new age book that has a vibrational frequency chart, Anything that vibrates love is the antidote of fear, of pain, all right? You hold the antidote, the cure, in your body, in your heart, in your life. It is you who get to save the world. Now, here's the funny part about this. This doesn't mean that you need to go campaign and become an activist of love. That's kind of an oxymoron. You could literally sit on your couch for the next three months, watching Netflix, being in love, and heal the world. Literally, do your part to heal the world. Because one person connected to their heart chakra in a pure place, without walls, without pain-based love frequencies, pureness of love can heal 700,000 people around you. You can quote me on this, okay? This is what we are as beings of light. This is what we came for. This is why we're here. We're here to love the ones that smirk at us and judge us. We are here to love ourselves. We are here to love the earth. And when we do that, we become the antidote. So I urge you to not move into total dissolution and you know, not pay attention to what is, 
but don't take what is as your truth. Take it as your base point to see how to vibrate the opposite. Really look at what's going on and say, how can I play the duality game and how can I show up as the opposite of what is happening right now? If I read a story about thousands of children going missing, what can I do in my personal life to be of service to act out the opposite of that situation? I know I could go volunteer at an orphanage this week because what happens when you lose your power is you begin to work for the other team and you don't even know it. You stay righteous, you stay judgmental, you're judging the judges, and you don't realize when you give your power away by observing pain that you are dropping down the frequency scale and you are now being part of the problem, not part of the solution, regardless of how your conscious reality experiences itself. You're like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm for love, I'm a light worker, I'm a guide, I'm a messenger, I'm a practitioner, right? But where is your focus? Where are your actions? How are you actually showing up, thought, word, and deed for humanity right now? Because if love wins, and I know that for a fact because I've been to the other side, if love wins, it's going to take as many of us as it can, as we can show up and act this out, right? Now, the worst thing that I could do in the world is be a loving, empathic, sensitive heart, which I am, which you are too, go down the rabbit hole and spend time watching cruelty, watching manipulation, watching betrayal, watching suffering, and bombarding my consciousness with all of these hours and hours and hours and hours of stories that further disempower me, lower my vibration. And you know what I'm going to say at the end of the day? Well, what can I do? What can I do to affect change? I'm just me. You know, I can't get over there where this is happening. I don't have the resources. And this is where you are mistaken. You have the resources right here. It takes no effort at all to be loving. To say, you know what? This story, it really triggered me. Hearing about this really upset me. Good. What's the other side of the frequency scale of that? Okay, I'm angry. What is the other side? Happy. How could I go make someone's day happy? How could I go bring happiness to someone's life? How can I show up as happy? I'm not being disillusional, but I am disillusioning myself. Because what I'm doing is I'm holding personal responsibility to the collective that is going to win this game. Because... Dark gets bigger because light workers go with it, okay? Dark is always chasing light because it's seeking the light. So when you turn your loving, generous, wonderful heart, you turn and notice these things, you're doing yourself a very big disservice by going into it. Now, I'm not saying that I don't know what's going on. What I'm saying is, is I observe in a state of neutrality, and then I look at it, it might trigger my heart, it might trigger my inner child, it may trigger my suffering. But I say, okay, my job is to not go with it. My job is to reflect the opposite. My job is to play on my team, right? Not, this team's looking like they're playing better, let's go see what they're doing over there. Let me spend three weeks going down that rabbit hole and I know this guy's name and I know where he lives and I know what he did and I know how he hasn't served jail time and blah, blah, blah. You've just spent a week of your currency, your time, which is your true value, finding out the details of madness instead of investing in light and love. Now, if this triggers you, obviously, work it out with your mentor, work it out, but move to the other side as quickly as you can because we're in May now, you guys. We're in the fifth month of May. Five is a number of change. It is a blooming energy. Last supermoon in Scorpio. Scorpio is about stinging and passion and vibrancy. It's all about being under that water. It's about moving into that space. And now we're coming out. April showers, right? Wow, well, we lost our freedom. Now we start the rebellion. And the rebellion that you're being asked to participate in right now is not discovering what the dark is doing. Your job is to be the light. Your job is to stand up and show joy, demonstrate happiness, sing, dance, make a comedy skit out of it. 
You know, start a dance crew online, start a workout program, start painting, start showing up through the frequencies of love, music, art, beauty. There's so much amazing things going right on this planet right now. Everything is going to be taken care of for you if you do your job. You're going to feel like a victim. You're going to feel helpless. You're going to feel disempowered if you spend too much time investigating what is wrong. Because what is wrong has always been wrong. We're in duality, guys. We're playing a very sophisticated game of virtual reality that in these suits feel very real because we have connected hormones that make us feel and the emotions that stir inside of us. And we believe that what we feel is true, but we have to remember at the base core of who we are, that we are love and love wins. Love is the only thing that wins. Love is the only thing guys that has not destroyed the constant bombardment of poisons in your body constantly for the last hundred years. We should have been dead as doornails just off the water we're, we're drinking could kill us alone. But because you hold this Christ consciousness, this crystalline heart inside of you, you are the antidote. By you loving, you put this energy out and you literally make that chemtrail fall to its knees by loving now, when I go out and I shout at that and I say, our government is trying to poison us, watch where my vibration just went, guys. I have just lost my power. I'm angry. I'm dropping down. I'm dropping down. I'm moving out of possibilities and magic and miracles into the problem. Einstein says you can't solve the problem in the problem. And now all I can do is call five people and say, did you see that they just put a chemtrail over my house? And then five people will go, oh, I'm terrified. They're poisoning us. And we're all light workers. So guys, it is about you leaning in and leveling up and staying in the frequency of love and challenging yourself to do the opposite of what that critic, that ego inside of you is pulling that agenda towards and saying, I don't know, I think I want to read six more hours about what the Illuminati is doing. Or let me spend six hours volunteering somewhere or six hours writing some poetry or six hours processing my childhood because I'm so triggered right now or six hours writing love letters to all of my friends and sending them in snail mail because how fun when they receive it. You have a choice. It is time for us to choose love. So don't call yourself love. Don't show up for your, for your clients and then act unaccordingly on the other side, because this will take a lot longer. This could happen tomorrow if we all said, guys, I'm gonna play the duality game. I know I so badly wanna go down that rabbit hole right now and I wanna spend hours watching this. I may watch the headlines. I might get the 411 so I'm informed, so that I know what to do the opposite of. And then I'm gonna spend 99% of my time vibrating love. Okay, because a flower, once it blooms, is not trying to return to the dirt and manure that it grew out of, guys. It's not. It's not going, oh gosh, this is terrifying. Bees are swarming me. The sun is so bright. Water is coming on me. Let me return to the manure. It doesn't do that. It has its life experience. It blooms. It does its job. It stays in the frequency of love, which is 528 on this planet frequency. And it does what it's supposed to do until its job is done. And that's what I'm encouraging you and asking all of you to do. Next month in our country represents Independence Day. Why don't we start today? Why don't we start now? Why don't we level up, stop complaining about what we don't have and what is going wrong. Look at that amazing toolbox you have, of all those certifications and all of that work you've done and all of that childhood work you've done and all that magic you've learned and start putting it into use. Start giving it away. Start sharing your heart. Every time you see a negative story, post three positive stories over it and delete the person who shared the negative story. Because you don't have time for this. We don't got time for this, you guys. We don't. We're living in a new era. And in order for us to be able to be able to shop and eat and play in this new era, we've got to get out of our own way by stop being the problem. Everything is happening in divine orchestration right now. What is happening behind closed doors is for the grown-ups 
the spiritual war to finish its cycle of action. Your job is to demonstrate what you want the new world to look like and how you can show up as a new you. Return to love. Return to love. You see someone judging you because you're in love? Good. Send them a blessing. Send them some love. They know what not what they do. They don't know how to not be afraid. But don't let their fear suck you into anger, suck you into judgment, because judgment is a frequency of fear. And I don't care if you have to take my frequency chart, laminate it on your refrigerator, look at it every day and say, where am I vibrating? You may think you're a little tiny person in a big world, but imagine what a mosquito can do in a room, right? You need to be that you because it just takes us guys, just us, just us. Do we want justice? It's just us. That's it. It's just us. No big army, no ammunition other than this heart, no bright ideas other than what I can do in the next moment to demonstrate joy and love. You know, no cool, fancy technology to back me up other than internet. It's like we have everything we need within us. It is your job to heal your heart and be your heart. Demonstrate love, practice love, share love as much as you can and record over the pain of this world. Because if I can stand outside and love a kitten and disempower and disconnect a chemtrail from hurting thousands of people with the vibration of love that I'm sending out, what can you do from your couch? Yeah, you may not be able to go anywhere right now, but all you need is inside of you. We're moving into big retrogrades and returns right now with astrology, and it's all set up for you to dive deep within, use your toolbox, use your knowing, use your heart, and be love, okay? Everything is lined up for you right now. It's actually going to take more energy to not do this because this is your natural state of being. I know it feels irresponsible for you not to be well-informed, but what is well-informed to get you if you're playing the frequency and vibration game on this planet? If all you are is frequency and vibration, what does well-informed off of one scenario? Because I would hope that if you are well-informed in the dark, you're also well-informed of the light. I hope that you're doing your due diligence and you're working on what's going right on this planet, not just what's going wrong. Because as you sit in the spectrum of duality, you are constantly in a perpetual fork in the road. And what you choose to be, how you choose to act, is either going to take you to the fear side or take you to the love side. And you could be a light worker, a healer, a messenger, a psychic, and still play for the dark if you're vibrating a lower frequency. All right? So that's the only message I have for you guys. I don't need to talk another 30 minutes about the same concept. I'm hoping that I planted a seed and pushed a button and pushed you a little bit this way and pushed you a little bit that way to remind you that you have the amazing abundance of choice. You have the freedom of choice. You have time to choose. You can have a relationship with your choices. And when you see something that terrifies you, you have the potential within you, the awareness within you to move to the other side of what excites your soul. What could I do right now to make people feel safer because everyone's afraid? Not tell the same story the news is telling or not bitch about the news, right? Because that's judging the judger, right? It's like, I'm gonna judge the powers that be. What does that do to my vibration, guys? I'm either love or I'm fear every day, all day, every moment. That is my choice. That is my only choice. So my action, my call to action to you is practice this for the rest of May. The rest of May, be love. And notice, notice what's different. Notice how your life begins to change. Notice how possibilities start entering your life and limits start disappearing. How doors begin to open. Because I'm not just asking you to, you know, die for the name of love here. I'm saying love and then watch what happens. Watch what shows up for you. Because when you love, you are the vibration of abundance, freedom, and the universe itself. So doors that used to be walls begin to open. And just because you're doing your soul mission work of love, doesn't mean that you're not going to get everything you've ever wanted and start to live a life of joy and bliss and harmony because of it. Because the universe only knows yes, guys. 
yes to your dark story that you're telling or yes to the happy story you're telling. Yes to your suffering, yes to your abundance, yes to your lack, yes to your abundance and freedom and money and all the other things. Yes to judgment, right? Yes to understanding. There is only yes in the universe. So everything you're looking at, feeling, and speaking on is just getting bigger. So guys, empaths, sensitives, guides, messengers, whatever you want to call us, the ones who don't understand cruelty, our job is to remain on the journey of love, no matter what. And notice what you notice. Notice what happens. Notice what shows up. Notice what changes. Write it down in your proof journal. Wow, this synchronicity showed up this week. This, sh this synchronicity showed up this week. I saw this story in the paper. Because when you change your quantum focus, your reality changes, you begin to quantum leap. You begin to jump into a timeline where those stories don't even exist. Where that pain doesn't exist. Where all there is is unity and harmony because you're building a reality based on what you're focused on. It's physics. What you focus on gets bigger. What you intend is your ground, is how you show up, is your action steps, okay? So yes, you need a little bit of faith right now because it's sucking you in. That That's the darkness within you that's sucking you over to that deliciousness of that chaos. It's like, it's like a train wreck that you can't stop watching and it's intoxicating. But I will tell you that that is just going to take us all down and then there's a few of us that are looking real irresponsible, focused on play and joy and love and abundance right now that will end up saving the world. So hopefully you can be on that team because it's only going to take a few of us. There might be 8 billion people in the world, but it only takes 0.5% of this planet acting in a state of love to win because they may have the money, they may have the power, they may have the control, they may have the resources, but they don't have the frequency of all freedom abundance that runs through us without the need of a battery. We're plugged into source energy. We are alive. The current is running and we can basically become the antidote for everything that they shoot out at us. Every manipulation, every sabotage, every hypnosis, every symbology that they're trying to indoctrinate us with. Love wins. All right. That is my message for May. I can't wait to see what you guys do with the rest of your month. I will see you all on the flip side for June. We'll see where we're at. But I have good feels of where I know where I'm going to be. So catch me having a great time, being an example, and not going down this rabbit hole of destruction when there is a beautiful world for us to create right now. Thank you guys so much for, for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you all soon.